I don't think I'm making too much of a leap when I say that people generally view the state as being the order, as being the bones. I certainly thought this way, that society needs some sort of structure, and that these anarchists, they're just against structure, and they're against order and planning. Because just think about all the times that the police have protected you when you're in danger, and about how safe you feel when you see a policeman in your rearview mirror, or when a cop sits near you in a diner. Um, I mean, it's a really good thing that that policeman's there to protect you from a potential gunman. And let's not forget about the structure that the uh, legal system provides. I know that if someone does me wrong in a way that is illegal, I can rely on the state courts to resolve the dispute. All I have to do is go look up the laws, see that the person who did me wrong is in violation of it, gather some witnesses, perhaps, and then see a judge, and after a heated but one-sided uh, trial, because remember, I'm in the right, I will get my restitution. It's funny, isn't it? It's, it's a bad joke. If a man attacked you and you wanted some sort of restitution, would you even know where to begin? And on top of that, what are the laws? You have people studying just certain aspects of the law, like tax law, criminal law, copyright law, tort law, and I don't know what they all are. But you have people spending years studying just certain parts of the law and there are contradictions in it, and it changes every year. And But of course, ignorance of the law is no excuse. If people really spent time on it, I think that most people would recognize that they functionally live without access to the law right now. Um, it is chaos. It is chaos right now. It is legal anarchy right now. And The reason the state is chaos is because it isn't governed by the discipline of free interaction. It doesn't pay the price for its own failings, and its services, if that's what you want to call them, are not the result of people wanting them. They don't have to provide any value. They just threaten to do bad things to you if you don't pay them their taxes. And, of course, the threats are required. That's why you pay your taxes. But the state cannot exist on force alone. But that's a whole other topic, a whole other story that uh, addressed in many other times and many other places. The state is a writhing mass of chaos. It is that, it's that formless black monster that's uh, seen in the nightmares, and its formlessness is caused by it not being governed by reality. Uh, an, animal, uh, an animal in reality has evolved through a long line of incremental evolutionary adaptations. Its design was earned, and even a single organism at one point in time can get fat or thin, uh, more or less muscular, in response to its environment. In the same way, a company, not a state-protected corporation, a company earns its design. A company earns its shape based on what people want and you know, what they're willing to pay for. A company provides value and is shaped by what they do that provides value and gets them money from other people. The company, let's say a charity company, provides value to the customer. The customer is the donator. If the charity is efficient in providing uh, services to the needy or getting people uh, jobs or, and all that stuff and, and uh, getting people to be self-sufficient, then that charity over time will get more customers. Less efficient charities, uh, charities that are known for embezzling, let's say, will get less customers until they either reform or go under. Companies earn their shape, uh, I guess you say they carve themselves out. The state does not earn its shape. When the state takes money through force and starts its own charity, its own uh, welfare scheme, its own social security scheme, what is going to carve that charity into its appropriate shape? Absolutely nothing. A state program is like an animal twisting and writhing in spasms, you know, just barely clawing along. The muscle spasms um, occur because there's no reason they would have the right mixture of uh, electrical impulses or glucose or whatever muscles used to work properly. There's no reason it would have the right mixture. It may just by chance, but there's no reason for it. The only reason that that animal can barely function and scrape along is because it follows the basic model of other animals that actually did evolve. In the same way, state charities and state education camps can kind of scrape and claw by 
because they very roughly emulate the behavior of private charities and private education, although education less and less so. The central planners in the Soviet Union were able to plan production that was somewhat workable, and you know, people weren't starving, because they had access to prices in other countries. And they could do a little bit of guesswork to, ter to determine how the Soviet Union would, would be different. And because they modeled price themselves off of the prices of other countries, Soviet resource allocation had some semblance of sanity. But without access to those prices, it would have spiraled you know, into sweet cup and cakes land. An analogy I like is that the state is like a cookie or a cake, and free human interaction is like vegetables. Vegetables are nutritious because they earned their shape. Um, what about vitamins? Well, vitamins, um, which are created by archons, the humans, uh, well, vitamins work passably well because they are modeled off of what other foods provide. Uh, they have access to the prices of other countries, or um, in this case, the vitamins have access to the nutrients in vegetables. And they model themselves roughly off the nutrients in uh, other foods, and, and so they work, get by passively well. When a company fails, it goes away. It is no longer carved out. But a state entity doesn't go away, and so the failing organ just grows and grows, into this hideous cancerous tumor until we end up with a nine trillion dollar debt. Normally it would fail uh, before we would ever see it get this bad, but with the state we get to see the bizarre world of a company that isn't allowed to die. This is what the bailouts will do. They will allow cancerous companies to uh, that should have died to live on. And so it mutates and becomes more and more grotesque uh, until the debt service becomes even greater than the total government outlays I have a hunch, and this seemed powerful to me, um, but I don't know how to say this without thinking I'm going way out on the limb here. When I first became an anarchist, I couldn't watch horror movies anymore. And I know you people don't care about me, right, theory of mind, but I've heard it's a common experience for anarchists. I don't know why I felt this way when I did. As soon as I recognized that taxation rests on death threats, I started to become sick to my stomach whenever I saw like a first-person shooter, and you know I'd get you know that hot and tingly feeling uh, whenever I watched people play games like Resident Evil or Doom. You know I had a hunch why this was, but I didn't understand it explicitly. Now that I go back to it, I get a little bit less disgusted, and when I recognize that Doom, for example, is an allegory. Look at the state. It gets you to pay for something that you don't want. Uh, something that has no reason to work because it wasn't carved out. You are violently forced to pay for the cancer. If you don't pay for the cancer, then the repercussions are psychotic. You go to hell, where you are tormented by sadistic demons, but also by the zombie men you were sent with. If you don't pay your taxes, you are sent to prison where you are tormented not only by the guards, but by the other inmates. The UAC in Doom, which is the uh, artificial agency in Doom, went to Mars, right? Mars, the god of war. And the UAC has unlimited funds and no legal boundaries, right? The UAC is everything that makes a state a state. And of course, it is the USC that uh, causes all hell to break loose. Warhammer 40,000 shows a world that is completely run by states. States have total control over their people, be they the Orcs, the Eldar, the Tau, the uh, Imperium, and there is virtually no free market, or if there is, it's only known to like Warhammer geeks, and they'll talk about like, I guess, the, the different markets on the different planets, but who the hell cares. And there are Archon symbols in Warhammer everywhere. You'll see Christian crosses, iron crosses, angels, halos, skulls, birds with extended wings, and the Holy Scriptures that are carried on banners in the battle, and it's constant war. War is everywhere. And the Eye of Terror at the fringe of the universe, uh, which spews forth these chaos hordes. It's, uh, it's the portal to hell from Doom, and it's the Eye of Sauron in the Lord of the Rings that spews forward all these uh, beasts. And, of course, people who come into contact with the state inevitably become corrupted by it. Everyone knows the, uh, the politician, or even just the activist, who changes over time in response to government funds. And this is also how the ring corrupts Saruman and Isengard, and how uh, former marines become zombie men and shotgun guys in Doom. 
and how the space marines of the Horus Heresy uh, become completely deformed by their chaos powers. I know Amendum is a train wreck, and it's often kind of seen as kind of lame to pick on him, but he is illustrative for his extreme stance in embracing cancer and chaos. And Mendem takes archism to its logical end, to a completely artificial world, a virtual reality. He wishes the entire world be consumed by nothing but chaos, and this chaos extends to his interpersonal relations. He demands respect, and he demands order under him, and the result is chaos. Everyone is guilty of this kind of behavior to a certain extent, but very few people pursue it as a principle like Amendum does. And, you know, it keeps me from getting big-headed because I know I don't create any of these videos except for, like, the actual scripts and, like, the pictures. I don't create them. I discover them. And I discover that you already know that the state is chaos. You know, it's why we have the same nightmares, for heaven's sake.